Greetings, everyone. I am uh, Corey with the Transcendence and Swedenborgian Community Online. And today we come to you with a very special episode and guest, Curtis Childs. Greetings. How are you doing? I'm, I'm pretty good, you know, considering I, I feel like, yeah, I, th this morning I feel in a good spot. You know, we, we recently actually, on top of everything else that's going on in the world, we had this huge windstorm come through our area last oh. week that it was uh, I think it's called a Dureco where it's straight line winds that are like as fast as a tornado but it's not a tornado and huge tree in our yard went down um, a power was out it was all crazy um, oh, yeah and so we're just like coming back in out of that thing things have been resituated and so but I'm just overall just feeling like yeah I am doing well um, and I appreciate you asking well it's good good to hear I I mean I'm really excited to have you on so if I, if I uh, start acting a little jittery, it's because of that. Because honestly, folks, if you don't know it, Curtis Childs is the host of an amazing YouTube channel called Off the Left Eye uh, that is sponsored, a uh, part of the Swedenborg Foundation. Um, and it's, it's been doing really amazing uh, stuff and, and has had a huge impact. Uh, by the time this airs, I bet you have at least 100,000 subscribers. So Curtis, tell us, what's, what's it like working with such a fine team on on such great uh, content and, and what's the show about yeah so well it's it's just been like a a really good dream huh. i mean if you think about so so i've uh, you know we we share in common this this interest in principles swedenborg wrote about right where we find some value in those and feel like there's something that they can offer to people and i'm, I'm i'll speak for myself saying they've offered things to me right and 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 actually been the stuff in there in these like in these weird old books right has been i was thinking about recently i was being interviewed and somebody was saying well what do you what we you know what's your experience with that content and, and i was just really realizing like the voice in there has been like this really steadfast friend to me like the concepts and the way that the truth about life that it lays out is like when i'm in the the darkest places where it's like where I'm overwhelmed by worry and fear and the things that are going on it's often been that view of life that that when everything else is kind of abandoning me you know I can kind of think well I, I I'm fine because look at how cool I am at this or that but your you know your own head can whittle that down into nothing right or I can say well I'll just lean on this or this kind of a when, when I've got nothing it's always this like oh wait um, you know God God is is taking care of you in this way um, this is the, the truth about how people can love each other. That sort of stuff is always reaching out to me and offering me a hand, you know? So, so it, it was, it's just been so cool to me to see other people respond as well, because I didn't, I don't know, like, am I just habituated to it? Right. Is it just familiar to me? So, so I'm into it, but to see when we first started doing stuff on YouTube, I just really didn't know if there would be any interest. And so to see, as you said, yeah, we're getting a, getting a, a bunch of people and, and all kinds of people. Hmm. It's like, you know, it's not a, really a demographic. The, 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 there is age around the world, but state of life, like the kind of person like you're, you know, like like um, I often think about, I often think back to early in the channel when there's this guy who's like a, a surf nomad. Like he would go surf, you know, and like uh, across Indonesia. And when he said, whenever he got Wi-Fi, he would tune into our show. And then like, then you also had like, Mormon business people, you know, just like this amazing spectrum, finding something. And it's not, you know, the, the team I work with and myself are facilitating it, but it's, it's the, the concepts themselves are resonating with people. So that's been, that's been so exciting. And, and to see that, not just that people will say, oh, I, I think this is good, I'll subscribe. But for them to say, this is helping me. Like I, I people all, all the time now, when you've got, um, you know, you got pandemic, all of the social unrest, everything that's going on. People are saying like, I'm tuning in here for comfort, right? Which, which that in itself speaks to uh, that they're getting that same kind of, um, that same kind of help um, that I'm feeling. So, wow. so it's just great to not be trying to force it. You know, there, there is that excitement. And so, yeah, but it's, it's not that, it's not that it doesn't take work, right? It's, it's, a, it's hard to, to, you know, you know the Sweden works. It's it's huge and it's sprawling and it's complicated. How do you how do you get it into a form that anybody is going to want to <laughs> eat? You know, like so so the team has been incredible doing that. 
um, I work with really talented people who have, you know, definitely pushed this thing in, forward in better ways than I could have imagined. And it still just feels like we're kind of starting out. You know, like, okay, we've sort of proved the concept, but where can this go from here? And how can this be of more and more service to the people who find it? So, so that's the short answer. I'll, I'll stop there. Yeah, well, I, I want to hear more, but that's that's really wonderful um, that you're having that impact. And especially in these tough times, as you mentioned, that people from all these different walks of life, different places around the globe are engaging with uh, your, your content and, and feeling really inspired. I mean, uh, being on the board of the foundation, I get to hear from you folks about like some of the competence, that, uh, the comments that you get and just how wonderfully um, impacted folks are uh, thanks to, to what you share. And so what is it about the, the content? And, and I know you, you mentioned it is tough to kind of get it across in a way that's consumable, but what do you think it is about the content that speaks to some of the people? Yeah, the comments are, are unbelievable. I just, I couldn't believe it when they started rolling in that, because even though we will work on something, right? And we'll put it together. But even when it's going out the door, I can say like, okay, this has some issues. Like th this part is not very tight. This is kind of like, I tried to make a joke there, but it's just dorky, you know, I, like th there's issues, right? But, but the impact somehow, despite all that, we get these comments of just people like, like, hey, you know, everything from like, um, this is the only thing getting me through the loss of my child to I was thinking about taking my own life, but then I started reading this stuff or you know, watching this and, and now I, I feel like I, I've, I've found some light and everything in between that you could possibly imagine. So um, I think that if, if I had to nail down, like what are some, some ways that I feel like we've tried to help facilitate that? Um, well, it's it's got to be genuine. Like it's got to be that it's something we really love to do, right? And and that the that the whole thing is infused with this effort to be of service to the people who are watching us. Like that we are not trying to command you, and we are not trying to um, you know attack you or what you believe in and is working for you. But we are genuinely saying. Um, hey, look, we know that this, look, the, it's a total marketplace of ideas right now. It's just with the internet and it, you just, everybody has access to all the life philosophy of the human race, all the religious traditions, all the like sort of contemporary self-help kind of stuff. It's all out there, right? Okay. So, um, so, you, so what we're just trying to do is say, look, um, here, here's an option for you that, that's working for us and and we, we don't mind if you take a piece with you. We don't mind if you take the whole thing and dive in deeper than we did. Um, we, what, we, what we want is you know, to try to, we, we felt that, that need for help. This has been helpful to us. We, we wanna give you anything that we feel like will be helpful. So it's gotta be that. And then it's just like, you really gotta be in there processing. There's a lot of ground to make up between you know, Latin in the 1700s and and today but even even before that just to try to transfer one person's internal world right in, into another like if i was just trying to tell you how i think and feel about life it's a very tricky thing to do let alone we're getting this input from from swedenborg so long ago so i think it really comes in from you know you got to re read the concepts but then it's got to be you got to be looking for them so that you see them in your own world Right? And once you have that, then you know how to talk about it in a way that doesn't feel too technical. Even if, even though we, we get really technical, but hopefully the spirit always has sort of like, we're telling you about this kind of flower, but we've, we've also been on the trail and seen that sort of flower ourselves. So it's not just a, a theoretical thing. Uh, that, that's my best shot at explaining it. Really, I don't know. I don't know why it works so well. I, I think it's a lot of it's just been some good luck or, or as, you know, off the left, I would call it providence. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful to hear that, um, you know, it has that impact and, and to you, it's, it's also uh, touching your own spirit. And so you, you know, you get to share what this 18th century, you know, mystical thinker thought uh, who, whose ideas have had real resonance in history for good reason, but also with people today as you're demonstrating. And then 
you get to share how it's worked in your life as as you mentioned before like a close friend the, the spiritual awareness has has really kind of uh, held you so uh so well and and i'm curious more about um that that path than anything else uh besides maybe hearing a little bit more about the fun aspects of off the left eyes like what, what's it been like for you uh growing up wherever you grew up and and finding the spirit and and being where you are today yeah so i, I think um curtis childs is brought to you by anxiety and depression i mean really yeah. Wow. What what I think like I so I that's what drove me into needing help. I mean the the stuff that the hard stuff in my life of all kinds, internal and external, right? That's true Made for it, so many of us. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's when you need help. I I have so, I told this story before, but a while ago somebody was interviewing me back when off the left I was just starting uh, and saying you know why are you so interested in in Swedenborg stuff. And, and I, I don't know, I said something along the lines of like, well, if you fall off of a boat, you're very interested in swimming, right? <laughs> that, that even now, to me, it's not like, oh, I've, now I've learned it and I'm spiritual and I don't, so I don't really need it. Like I, every day I'm still using this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I, I was, uh, I, I've always had Swedenborg in my world. I mean, and that's definite because I grew up in a church community that was, Swedenborgian church so it's it's definitely I've had a, well I guess you could call it a leg up I mean most people wouldn't be like you're so lucky you got <laughs> you got raised around some weird religious thing but I it did make it what it did do for me is make it um, so that it wasn't a foreign thing right it gave me direct access and I just oh yeah Swedenborg's always around and I did definitely just growing up have an affinity for thinking about spiritual kind of stuff. And I, and I liked Swedenborg's writings. Um, but it was, it was just what, what I think you would call just, it was just kind of cultural, you know, it was there. Um, but it was when, when I started really needing help that it became more obvious to me. And it was like sort of up and down. It wasn't just like, there was times when I wasn't interested in the Swedenborg at all. And then I was, and then I, you know, but at a certain point it clicked in as like, Oh, this, this is offering me the best tools of anything. To, to deal with what I'm doing. And, I, and it went from, this is something that's describing history or, or something academic that's outside of me to like, well, this is, I, I'm seeing that exact thing play out in the way my mind works, you know? So, so um, I, I would say that the, I, again, I didn't anticipate any of this. Like I didn't mastermind where we are now. I didn't, I didn't architect it. It just happened in a series. I remember like I was going to go and I was going to study, get my degree in conservation biology and go and like live in nature and like study nature stuff because that was my favorite thing in the world. Right. Oh, that was going to be what I did. And, and, um, but, but it just, things just kept shifting and shifting. I just got better at the kind of like communication stuff. I just, you know, somehow I, I always liked writing, but started to get better at speaking in public and that sort of thing. And I just, more and more the Swedenborg stuff was just popping in and I, and I couldn't help it. And I was just, okay, I'll go and get this job at like the World Wildlife Federation, but I'll also have a Swedenborg reading group or something. But then it just became undeniable um, that, that this, this was the way I could best um, contribute to people's well-being. what was through it. And then, and then it was just like the way off the left I happened was a series of fortunate, fortunate accidents and, and even the stuff we've done within Off the Left Eye, there's been times when I feel like, oh yeah, I know what I want to do and we do it and it works okay. But there's other times when I was expecting us to go this way and then something worked in this direction and we've been going that way ever since. So I, I do feel like, you know, Swedenborg talks about being able to see Providence from behind, but not while you're in it. If I look back, it's definitely seemed like something has been leading uh, us, us to where we are. And for me, yeah, even, like, yesterday um, i'm needing these concepts this morning i'm needing these concepts like this is to me i'm still i yeah i still haven't figured anything out i i don't even know if i'm like as good at the spiritual stuff now as i was a, a, two years ago you know i just it's very hard to make pro and you go through these periods of wow everything works look at me like I, i'm like a i'm i feel like i feel like superman right now because all this stuff that was coming in and trying to 
disturb me and disrupt me. It's like, bam, I'm just principle after principle, just swatting it back. And I feel like this love for the human race and it's going really well. Um, and then I'm just back into like worrying about everything and, oh, am I getting sick right now? You know, like, and, and what about this thing and that and getting petty and all this sort of stuff. So it's very much, I'm still a customer. I'm very much still a customer of what we're doing. And I was kind of hoping, you know, eventually I would just pop out and just be enlightened for all time, but maybe that'll happen in my forties, like the thirties, not, not quite. Well, it's, I think it's really refreshing for, for all of us to hear that it's still a journey for you and that you're willing to share that with us because I think for any spiritual leader, for anyone sharing um, even a reflection and, and trying and hoping to inspire folks, uh, the fact that they are engaging with their spirituality and that it's, you know, yes, you, you, want, you want that mountaintop experience and I think we want to maintain that as much as possible. Um, but often, as you said, it, it's just not there. And, and sometimes we try to hide that and, and shy away from that. And I think it's really, um, you know, relatable that you, you were driven to this from anxiety and, and pain, because I know uh, a lot of folks today are, um, you know, holding depression and anxiety and, and hurts and uh, a spirituality that's a real tool for folks it has an amazing impact. And so Thank you for, for sharing that aspect of your of your journey with us. Sure, man. And I do think that I'm a big believer in you know the spectrum of treatments for for the pain we're going through. Like I'm not trying to say, oh, just do religion instead of um, instead of you know counseling and nutrition and all that kind of stuff. But as you alluded to, I do think there's a place that um, whatever you want to call it, religion, spirituality. Can, can touch that, that I haven't found other things be able to touch. So it's like, to me, it's incomplete without it. And, and the better you're, or the more effective those concepts are in there, the better it can, can try to, to lift out. But yeah, man, it's, yeah. it's totally, um, well, it's the day night cycle, right? Like you, you go up, you go down, it's the, the, the summer winter cycle, um, going up, going down. Um, and mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's, that's just, I think that off the left eye, part of what drives me to, to try to help shape it and things is I'm trying to make like the thing that I need, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like if think like I, the thing that if, if way back, you know, when all, before all this started, if this had existed, I would have gone to it for help, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, so trying to build that up and so we're always thinking of, you know, how can you use new technology, um, to, to continue to better and better serve people. Like I want the, to, a way to make ideas that come always a companion to you because um, even now, like I'll, I'll read something that it says something about life, you know, something, something even, I'll give, try to give something specific. Like there's one place in Swedenborg where he says that there are people who are in the stream of Providence um, acknowledge that they don't know what they need. And t to me, that, that stuck is really profound. And here's why. Because it's, it's basically giving you permission to, to, to acknowledge that the truth is you don't know what you need. God knows what you need. And, and not just like what I need, like do I need a car right now? But even down to like what kind of mind you need to have, what sort of events in life, all that. So what, how you can use that is when your individual terrors and things come for you and they say like this is a way let's say you're failing in this way okay they love to say that sort of thing right or, or, or something comparable well it may be i don't know if i am or not but i also don't know if i need to succeed right there because the lord knows what i need and divine providence is what is setting me on the course for getting you know you, you talked about that mountaintop state to getting there forever and going even above so i trust the lord it's just it's become it's almost like you're you're in a court battle with your own thoughts and feelings like they're coming with their lawyers and trying to get get in and get you or like or what if what if you get sick right now i've been i've been thinking you know when when coronavirus first hit and i was thinking about it, like every time i had it's allergies and every time i had allergies it was like that's it i'm done like you know it's over and like like four or five times in the first couple of months i was like Oh my gosh, that's, I can't believe it's ending now, right? Um, 
it's like me this morning. I feel allergies. That's, in. Well, yeah, man. Yeah. So, so totally like, and, and it, it's not like I can, I definitely haven't been able to just like, just spiritize it all the way. But there are definitely times when in that situation, because what do you say to your worries at that point? I mean, because they, they say you're getting sick. So you can see there. I just was talking about this on a show recently. There's sort of the earthly and the heavenly argument against that. Right. So the earthly argument is, look, there's um, it's allergy season. Pollen index is high. Um, these are not usually the symptoms coronavirus starts with um, that. I have been social distancing. The chances of me getting it are low. The chances of me dying from it are very low. It might you can hit them with the earthly stuff. But if it's just that, you'll still get this like, but feel how you feel right now. You're getting yeah. sick. Because the fear be, is almost like from a deeper place. It has nothing yes. to do with the virus, right. really, right? Right, right. So if you have your earthly defenses, but then on the other hand, you say, well, you know, all around me is heaven right now. You think about people who write about near-death experiences. And, you know, because like your mind will pr present you these images of the poor people that are in the hospital and like they're, they're on ventilators and just like the misery that they're going through, right? Mm -hmm. Well, even the people that die. You have you read near death experiences and like how immediately there's just this love around them and this light around them and just this absolute comfort and relief and just that that light is sitting all around everything, right? Um, but it, even though, it, but even before you get to that point to be able to say, um, coronavirus has nothing to do with anything, it's divine providence. The Lord is only going to let anything negative happen that's, that's actually going to make me happier forever. And this moment is just temporary as compared to forever. And it, I mean, you know, so, so I trust that the Lord is going to do what the Lord needs to do. Whatever it is, whatever concepts you have that ring true for you at the time, to pair that with your earthly defenses, that can be pretty potent. That, that can sometimes beat it back. Um, so I, I forget why I started explaining all this stuff to you, but I think it was probably for a really good reason. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, I love that point about, um, well, a lot of your points around this, but about acceptance, like uh, being aware of how you don't know what's best for you and, and how things will play out in, in the long run. And, uh, you know, Swedenborg has that idea of, of free will being necessary in the universe. But despite at least that semblance of free will, God is trying to and is optimizing everything for your benefit or for everyone's benefit. And so, yeah, that, that kind of acceptance pr is pretty radical because it, it's like fearlessness in a sense. And, yeah. Or it's like, you know, often we're fearful of our fear. And I know there's that famous quote around yeah. that. But in a way, it almost allows you to accept even when you're not being accepting, funny enough. Um, yeah, right, right, right. Well, okay, so right now this fear is here, but I'm not going to get all bent out of shape, yeah. you know, saying I should be able to get rid of this fear. Maybe I can't, whatever. I, I, I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, and... and um. Uh, it's just when you say radical, um, you know what, you know what makes you interested in. If your world has been disrupted enough, you want radical, mm -hmm. right? So, like, if I hadn't, we go on YouTube. Just think about this. We go on YouTube and just say the most radical, weirdest stuff in the world, right? We're talking about, we're talking about, yeah, you don't know what you need. We're talking about, um, you know, thoughts and feelings from heaven or from hell. We're talking about spirits. We're talking about um, yeah, the God in every detail, that, that human prudence is nothing. It's all weird stuff. But when when you can really feel like, oh, the system is is really messed up. My own personal system is really messed up. You're suddenly open to more radical solutions, right? So to me, yeah. I, I can I can f hear something like, I don't know what I need and, and cling onto that and love it and say that that is exactly the solution. Whereas before, when everything's going good for me, and I'm I'm outperforming my enemies, and um, I got all, all, all my my personal stuff is going well. It's like oh, I don't really want to rock the boat too much, you know, because it's like no, nah, I'm I'm good. But but um, that that ego satisfaction state is 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 an illusion because it'll feel good for a while, and but it just makes you more and more vulnerable to the the attacks of, of fear and worry when they do come. So. I, I love the idea of, and I think that, I sort of think that, yeah, that the, the Swedenborg concepts are like medical grade concepts. Like you can, you can have some stuff that's just, that's just like, you know, you know, be, be good, 
um, think you can have stuff uh, like sort of spiritual philosophies that's that's good and encouraging and positive, but but isn't really super radical. And, and that will work for you if you don't need something that if you don't need a lot. But I think uh, you know the, the stuff that that we're trying to put out there can can be like, oh no, we need to totally rethink how we approach life. Uh, and I I really like doing that. That's amazing. I, I think. Your, your joy kind of comes through when you're, you're talking about it and your awareness of it as like a real tool. Um, uh, it's radical because we don't often have tools like that at our disposal, spiritual tools to connect us with divinity, to connect us with ourselves in a healthier way and, and other people. Um, yeah, can, can I say, and so too, you can imagine, and I think you're feeling the same thing because you're out here doing, doing shows. When you, when you feel like, wow, I've discovered I and the, these other people have discovered these tools that are really helping out. You just feel this obligation like, well, I need at least need to raise public awareness about this. Like I need to provide public access to these tools. Maybe I don't know for sure that they're, that they're the best tools or, or I, you know, how can I know? But I need to try to distribute this because I don't think people, I think a lot of people could be helped by this and they don't know about it. Right, so that's sort of what part of what drives our mission is. Is look, uh, we need to at least give people this option, and we're seeing as it goes out into the world that people are using these tools to be helped. So, how many more people could be helped by this, and how could those people be helped more deeply? We just need to see where does it end. And until we hit this, like, okay, we're not really doing good for the world. We got to keep pushing and pushing because I know that if I was, you know, struggling and, and out there and didn't have tools that were serving me. I would, I would need somebody to come and, and show me something, right? So we're, we're thinking about that next person who maybe doesn't have um, the tools they need and how do we get the tools to them? And, and then how do we keep improving the potency of those? Because if I'm Curtis and I'm sitting here swimming in it all the time, but I'm still struggling, well, what's the next move? You know, how do you make it even stronger? How do you organize it? How do you systematize it? You know, I, I, is there a way that we can cut the, the suffering down and you're not going to eliminate it. But, but I, I think there are, you know, aspects of the suffering we all go through that can be mitigated. And truly, uh, amen to that. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious as you've uh, worked on these tools and, and have learned over the years working with off the left eye and um, w what were some of the aha moments with your team, with, with the content as you've, you know, you were putting out these, crazy shows about angels and um, what have you, near-death experiences. But yeah, what were some of the aha moments? Okay, I, I can think of a few. Um, awesome. One was, well, one, one is not that exciting, but it was um, long versus short. That there was a time in which I thought like, oh, it's the internet. People have short attention span. You gotta do short videos. But we, little did we know that you know YouTube's algorithm was changing right at that time to favor longer videos and just the nature of the kind of content we did. We had this switch and this was one of those times when I thought, okay, we'll start making like three, four minute videos or maybe 10 minute videos. But then we, we to kill time in the meantime, started doing these hour long broadcasts and those were what really took off. So I, I think that it was an aha for me that when you're looking for these tools, when you really have the kind of need that I think is driving a lot of people to interface with off the left eye, a need for something in your life, something new, something radical, um, you've got time. People have time for that. You know, if it's that important to you, you've got time. Uh, another aha moment was um, when I just, when we, we realized like, okay, actually, we don't need to try to seem normal. We, we need to actually seem strange. And just that actually the more strange not clickbaity or not conspiracy ish but just like the more you just put that strangeness in your title the more you stand out and and actually fit with the searches that, that people were doing so it was great because at the beginning of off the left eye i we just had to like make a whole video that was all based on the swedenborg concepts but then maybe just put a little swedenborg quote at the end or something and couldn't we're limited in what we could talk about because we couldn't start talking about weird stuff like angels and stuff because we're trying to be normal um which which worked but it had limited appeal we broke through into where we can just openly talk about it um it, but do it in a way that acknowledge with some self-awareness 
um, that we know that, that this is strange, um, but yet we're enthusiastic about it and think you can find something out of it. And to me, that is just really freeing because now we have the whole, because me, I benefit from the whole structure of Swedenborg's thought, right? Because like, you, you know how to, like it, one thing ties into another thing, ties into another thing, like yeah. the structure- It's pretty of, consistent, right? Yeah. Exactly. And in the structure of the mind that he, that he um, describes, it directly relates to what's up with heaven and angels, directly relates to God and providence. And, and really, like, I feel like you almost can't read it without knowing the whole thing. Because like, and I, I, I think I gave this example before somewhere, but, um, you know, you, you crack open heaven and hell and read a part of it. Uh, I remember that at the beginning of this sort of sub- set of it that was the world of spirits section that the swedenborg foundation published is called our life after death and it was meant to be just be really really for newcomers right this is like this low barrier to entry it's the most near-death experience e part of it um but right away even there when you open it up it starts like the world of spirits is not heaven or hell but it's a place in between where people go before they're raised up into heaven or thrown down into hell yeah, that's what it says, which, which you and I know that, um, and that's exactly what Swedenborg says. And, but it puts people also know that nobody, nobody gets thrown into hell. Nobody yeah. gets thrown into hell. And this is one of the, this actually one of the defining things of Swedenborg's description of the afterlife is nobody, nobody's forced into anything. And he ex later explains that if what you love is harming people and, and uh, dominating people and, and working for, for their destruction, you just dive after what what's what's we would call hell to you. You think, oh, this is great. I love this. I love this kind of cruelty. Um, so that's what's going on with the separation from heaven and hell. But but he doesn't say that in that spot. But you know that's what he means. And so it's really almost like you know, the it, you're very much in danger of getting the wrong impression unless you know the whole thing. So if yeah. I'm here thinking like I've got to know, I'm benefiting from knowing the whole thing. That's what, that's the only reason, like if I just cracked open Swedenborg today, depending on what book, when, what page I'm on, I might just, okay, well, I don't, that's something Christian theology, so I don't need that, right? But, um, so what we're trying to do is um, be able to, in our video um, catalog, cover as much as we can, so that you have access to all the things that buttress, and then bringing it back to where, you're in your little world and the, the hell is coming in trying to get you. The more you have like truths stacked on top of truths on top of truths, the, the stronger that is. Like I think about like those pillars of triangles or whatever that are really strong shapes because, because if, if, if um, hell is trying to, you know, you have something you're defending yourself with, like a, you know, some, God, God is taking care of things um, and they're trying to push back on that and get you to worry in the moment. Um, if you have more supporting truths, like more, more ideas that are sort of tertiary to that, those, those pop up as well. It's almost like, yeah, you're just, well, I'm just saying it's, it's support. better to yeah. have more support because, and you're going to be able to then have a, a sort of immunity from all different kinds of worries and concerns and things. And so just it seems like building that structure in your mind, it's going to build differently in everyone's mind, but building that thing up is, is important. So that's why I'm so glad to just get to move freely through all this stuff in Swedenborg's writings to um you know get get people the the tool and even even in the writings uh swedenborg talks about how you know you uh, truths just get into your mind through it seems like through reading and things but then it's god is assembling them in a particular way in your mind right so everybody's got their own little truth scape there that that is is again done by the divine and and specific to your needs so we just want to give try to give out the raw materials as many as we can for that yeah well well, thanks for sharing that. Yep. Yeah, I'm curious uh, when when you when you go into the office and you're you're about to to record or, or work on content or, or what have you, uh, what are the moments that get you the most jazzed, um, like or, or excited or engaged in, in your yeah. work? Yeah. Okay, so there's a couple of things. Um, like if I'm going to record content and I really feel like I have something to say that I understand. That's what feels that like that, that this and, and, and more so when it feels just self-evident. Like I'm not trying to tell you like stretch out and believe this 
strange thing that you can't really know or test or anything. But if instead I'm, you know, this is just, of course, of course, this is like this. Of course, it, it just feels great coming out. Um, that's that's what I'm really excited. Or if it's something that that has been this 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 ally and comfort to me that I really needed in certain areas, and now I get to feel like we're taking that dark time that I had, and now we're using it to to say something that I think it's going to do the same thing for that person. That really hypes me up. Um, I like. I really like the idea of continuing to um, expand. I don't know if professionalize is the right word, but just hey, let's let's d- can keep dusting this off and 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 shining it up and and having it be something that if you stumble on it, you are going to feel like you can trust the brand. You know, like you can trust that. And that that can be like through tying it into things in the world. Like I really feel happy when we've got this concept from Swedenborg. Oh, I was just recording something about infinity. That everything God does is infinite, right? Infinite and eternal. That is the like you know if you look at some old painting of like Michelangelo, it'll have, like where's his little signature on that? The God signature is it's infinite and eternal. And it was an episode that was I think will be airing soon. It's called. Um, why did God create so many people? Why do we have so many people? And, and, and what, like, are, are you sure we're all getting the individual attention we need? Why, why are there so many people? There's this fascinating thing about, um, you know, why, why, why it needs to be, and that heaven has to be in a state of perpetual expansion because um, it, heaven is made by God and God has to have things that are infinite and eternal. And, it, and, and that actually, us being able to observe things that have that tendency, we can't understand what that means when we just think about God. What does it mean? God is infinite and eternal. Whatever, okay, that's just a thing you said. But we can understand something like, oh my gosh, there's so many people and there's just always going to be brand new people. And these people are not like anybody else who's ever come. And that's going to go on forever. Like that, that's like, whoa, I get like that's That's crazy. Okay. And I get it. And so us being... Us being able to observe infinity in that allows us to turn our minds to, to God. And he was just talking about how heaven has to be perpetually um, looking towards expansion and infinity. If it wasn't, you wouldn't be able to network with God. So I was thinking, like, that's cool. And what he, the example he ties it to is just um, look at the way that the biology of, he gives the example of plants is. Any you know, any fast reproducing plant, really any plant is just coming with these hundreds or thousands of seeds, right? And those seeds, if they, if they wanted to, if they had ideal conditions and there was no restrictions because of environmental factors or, or predation or whatever, you would have this incredible expansion of the population of that plant. That plant is trying to just cover a continent like in the next three years, you know, just because there's so much stuff going on and there's nothing written into that DNA that's like, okay, like I'm looking at a, a pine tree out my window right now and there's nothing written into that DNA that is saying, well, there's a clock in here and after 200 million years, we're not going to try to reproduce anymore because that's plenty of time to have had these sorts of pine trees in the world just forever. Like that is the marching orders of that of that he doesn't use the words DNA, right? He didn't know about that, but but we know, you know. And so and so to now to be able to say there's this infinity and eternity and everything God made, and be able to point something that everybody knows and agrees on, and say, don't you even have to listen to Swedenborg? It's right there, it's right there, sitting in front of you. That is really exciting to me. Um, and, and then so that's just part of building out what I think it can offer. What I think this the Swedenborg worldview can offer is there's this total magic in religious spiritual kind of stuff like i'm talking about the idea of god and the idea of heaven and even people's experience with sacred texts and and all sorts like there's there's total magic in it but it's really tough to engage with it in a world that that really seems to the more we learn through science and uh, contradict a lot of the core tenets that support this stuff i think that one of the gifts that swedenborg can give is like Look, you get to have your cake and eat it. Like all, even down to like theology and and like you know stuff like 
mercy and the Trinity and these sorts of things, that stuff can be there in a way that doesn't just not, it doesn't just get along okay with science, but just loves it. Just loves what, what you learn about the physical world is teaching us how to look at the spiritual world, you know, and the stuff in the human body is teaching you about heaven. It's just like so exciting. And, and I think it's something that a lot of people want. I think that there is, there's grief around uh, from all sides around this, like, wait a second, um, you know, do we have to choose? And, and science is just so powerful. I mean, look at us here on these laptops. Religion didn't make those, you know? <laughs> so, so I just think there's so many people that, that, that even like we'll go online and there'll be some Christian people who are like, wait a second, this is not, is this biblical enough? Well, who is Swedenborg? What is this? And like, like it's a threat maybe to, but I'm saying, dude, you, you, you don't know how glad you are that this is here. Because if once you get into it, you're going to see that this is given, given people, you know, yeah. what they want. And, and, and also like, oh man, it's, it solves like the insular nature, nature of religion that you can have religion, but yet not look to, to really help people because you can be just tied up and okay, we've, we've, we we like ourselves so, but but the Swedenborg stuff pushes you out beyond. It just seems like it's exciting, man. It's exciting, and yeah, yeah to, to add that in. Yeah, it's such a healing element, right? that good theology and spirituality. And yeah, it's funny because a, a lot of folks, whatever their religion, but um, like a lot of Christians come to mind. Uh, other Christians, um, maybe Swedenborgian sometimes, but a lot of Christians often think, "I'm just a Christian. I read my Bible." And I'm just taking what's from the Bible and I'm putting it in my life. Why can't you do that as a Swedenborgian Christian or whatever? And yet, like we learn as I think as we discover um, good theology or reflect on our own theology, um, that we're actually inspired by, you know, the local pastor and, and all these other theologians from centuries ago that inspired our traditions. We're not actually just going to the text as blank slates. And so that good theology goes a long way and um, acknowledging that yes, Luther, Calvin, all these people have influenced my Baptist thinking, my Lutheran thinking or whatever. Um, and maybe Swedenborg has something to say that can help inspire me further or in a, in a different way. Yeah, man. And, and, and thinking about ecumenical sort of the, the, the divide between different religious groups and that, that there's this amazing framework in Swedenborg that that allows you to because it's sort of like you know, there's this call to like look let's have all religions get along right let's have them get along because because look we're, we're all people we want them to get along but there's this element I think within religions that say well wait a second that means our religion is based on this idea that we have this picture of reality and you're just saying that that that, that those principles um, that we just abandon those because, but our religion says that that ours is the ours is God is reaching down through this religion to reach out to the human race, you know. But the 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 tapestry that Swedenborg weaves, like where he will talk about, look, you know, even the, the hieroglyphics in in Egypt were based on the same correspondences that were used to ins, that, that were inspiring the way that the um, the Old Testament is written, and and just that look that actually you have a a framework by which you can see. Um, God being present in, in all these things and not just as a platitude, but like really present, you know, in a way that, that you can trace back and, and see the system. And I think there's potential there too, to, to be a, a good partner in this, in this sort of push to get um, people of different religions to, to see each other as, because people will say like, oh, this religion or this religion, which one, that's not the actual battle. The battle is between every single person and then love of self and love of the world right it's it's inside each of us that, that that i'm trying to say look i have tendencies to exploit everyone or or rage against everyone or steal from everyone whatever it is and i need to not do those that that's where the real struggle is is, is for everyone it's not like about and, and people have said this but it's not about like yeah, spreading our different religious organizations, both of those organizations can be aiding it, their individual members in that individual battle, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I love how this kind of ties back to what you said earlier about um, Swedenborgian spirituality being this really uh, healthy tool, this really um, powerful tool in, in 
our lives. And, and I think that's true for a lot of different things, obviously, like our experiences can be that tool. It can help give us a new lens on life, as people say, or look at our own religion or spirituality a different way. And I think learning about Swedenborg, even if you don't consider yourself a Swedenborgian, can like add that kind of new lens as well. And you can stay Muslim or, or Lutheran or what have you. Um, kind of like a near-death experience can do that. You just have this kind of uh, realization in, in these different ways. And um, I, I like that idea that the tapestry that Swedenborg weaves and, and that we can each kind of weave if we're willing to open um, our, our acceptance and support for people in their diversity instead of trying to say, you know, if you're not like me, you're going to hell. And I think that can be really tough um, for folks, you know. Right, right, rightly so. Um, yeah, we're talking about the truth castle, right? Or the, the truth thing that's being built in everyone's mind, right? The truth can come from a lot of different sources, right? And so the Lord is arranging those. And yeah, I, I love the idea. People definitely dip in and to our channel and say, like, oh, I'm going to take a couple things and take them back with me, you know, in, into my world. And that's great. We want to be distributing as much because you never know. People, it, it's not just enough to have like, okay, well, there there's concepts and are they here or are they not there? Every different person, every different setting allows you to understand those concepts in a certain way. And it's really, the concepts only take you so far. It's about your loyalty to them. And it's about your, the way that you pursue, pursue uh, a right sort of life. So I'm just thinking of, it's not just even about what is each religious tradition say, it's what kind of people, what kind of love of the neighbor does it cultivate? You know, so there's definitely, um, just a lot of good stuff going on in the world, um, and and we want to we want to empower that, and then provide this really strong repository of stuff that we feel like is is um, is some things found nowhere, and can this expand the conversation? And for for stuff that is found everywhere, can we add this to a larger framework? We were just doing a show about near death experiences, where we were. Um, showing these different near-death experiences and how they have all these different elements to them. And Swedenborg provides this framework that explains a lot of those elements. Why? Yes, people are wearing white robes in your experience. Why? Why are they? And what's the system? Because we, everybody knows the physical world works via systems, that, that there are these laws in it that apply everywhere. So can we tease out what, what are those uh, in the spiritual world? and and to start to see those then in people's living experiences, it's just exciting, it's just cool. And I think that example of a near-death experience is really powerful for folks because I, I know you all explore it um, throughout your shows, uh, but so many people, no matter whether they're you know atheists or uber-religious, have these experiences that are hard to explain, and yet there's so many common veins. And here Swedenborg is, you know, hundreds of years before any literature as far as I know about those experiences became popular. He's writing about these, the ways that they're interconnected and why. And it's, yeah. it's pretty powerful. Yeah. It, it is powerful. And I, so I spoke recently at the IANS conference, International Association for Near Death Studies conference. And we always talking about Swedenborg and, and how it ties in and everything. And I think even there, there's a service that Swedenborg stuff can provide because people who have these near death experiences, like they know, they get things on a much more visceral level than I ever will from my armchair, right? Like I, I, I know that I, I know somewhere in me, like I know that the Lord is there and that, that I like, not only that the Lord loves me, but at a certain level, like I just love the Lord. Like I, I have a lot of, I have a lot of um, pent up anger and things about just, just the pain of life. Right. But at a certain level, there's a song that I just, that I heard by, um, by the Avett brothers or the Avett brothers or something. It's called No Hard Feelings. And he's, he's singing about when he dies. And he's, and he's like, will I, will I become part of the ocean blue or, or, or something like walk up to the savior true and shake hands laughing. And I just like, even there, like I get a little lump in my throat. Like even after, like, it's all right. Like, hey, I, I get what you're about. Um, so my point is the near death experience people even though I have certain aware of that awareness of that, the people who have gone and had that experience, they, they know that and they know the, the reality of the afterlife and the reality that life is more than this on a, on a, like, I, as I said, on a sensory like level that I never really will. 
but yet, uh, we were just interviewing yesterday uh, PMH Atwater, who is like a near-death experience researcher um, who has written a lot of books on that. And she was saying, it's not even really, a, the near-death near experience is just a start. It's the after effects that really matter, the life change after that really matter. And a lot of people, even who've had those experiences, are looking for, well, how, how do I, I just had this one thing. How do I live by that? You know, what, how do I make a context around that? I think even for them, even though they've seen so much more than I've seen, there's value in Swedenborg for them. That they, there they are going to, and we've had people in that community say that, that this is going to, you want to take that and put it to use. Swedenborg is going to provide you with a framework. His descriptions are never going to be as moving as the ones that you hear in near-death experience books, but there's so much utility in what he says that even people who have gone and just seen God and been sitting in God's lab and God is cuddling, that's awesome experience. There's something of value that, that Swedenborg can, can offer to their, their lives, I think. That's amazing, I, I believe it. You know, honestly, I, I didn't get to cuddle with God, but I, I had a near-death experience before I became Swedenborgian, um, which is what kind of sent me on the trajectory. Because when I, well, at first when I started reading Swedenborg, I really loved his, his deep concepts that I think you all explore really well. An awful left eye, like um, God's compassion and understanding and is working through everyone and in everyone and, and on and on. Uh, and it was almost like a side benefit that he was explaining these, the spiritual realm that really fit well with what I experienced in my dear, near death experience. And right. I think you're right. Like without, I think Swedenborg was kind of a key for me and it sounds like it's Swedenborg's been a key for you and, and for many others um, to, to lean into what you mentioned earlier, which is uh, kind of what it's all about, a love of the neighbor, a love of God in other people and ourselves in all things. And, and that's not to say don't love people, but that, God is the goodness, the, the healthy structure in all things. So really, yeah, that love of the neighbor is what it's about. And um, it's cool that you, you return to that focus and that uh, really it sounds like that's what you're trying to get across, like why you would even take time to talk about angels or what have you. That's well said, um, because if, if this is not... Uh, the only reason that I feel like I'm embarking on it, I, I think a lot of my team members as well, I won't speak for them here, but this, I'm only doing this because this is, I feel like my most potent, the most potent way I can try to bring, bring love, which brings happiness to, to everyone. Right. I mean, cause it's, we know you got to love people. It's, it's really tough. How do you get there? What do you do? Like, how do you, I need more. Right. And so just thinking that you're absolutely right. The whole point is, this, this stuff, um, the, the love and the comfort and the trust and everything that comes in with, you, you know, the more you suffer as a human being, the more you realize like human beings shouldn't suffer. Like it's just no fun. Like it poor, poor, like you just really feel more and more like oh, all these poor people, all these poor people, like all of us, <laughs> like you just think about all the, the suffering that we're all going through in all of our different ways at our different times. And you just like, we, that's the main issue. We got to get on that, you know, I like then Sure. You got to like build out infrastructure and things, you know, in the physical world. But the point of all of it is, is heaven. I mean, it is heaven for people and heaven is a state of mind that people, and, and is a state of action. You know, you think about what it would be like right now if everybody was acting out of love with the neighbor you know, and, and really like that what we were all unified in doing was saying, where, where you're hurting or where you need something or where you need clarity, we're gonna to try to get you that and you're gonna do the same for us. You just think about what the human race would be capable of there. But but yet, here we are. And and why why don't we? Because, because man, it's it's uh, it's hell, right? It's it's all the, the love, is, it's, there's so much getting in the way, all the greed, um, all the, the, the unfeeling, all the, all the self-centeredness, all the ignorance, whatever, um, that's hard to chip away at. I mean, people, or we would have done it by now, because people, almost everyone, a lot of, just about everyone would agree in principle, you know, we should all get along, we should all be nice, right? But it's just like, there's so much work to do there, and I feel like Swedenborg is gonna give us some really, as I said before, medical grade, weapons grade, whatever you wanna say, uh, stuff to try to chip away at that. Can we create a system that liberates individual people who then go out into the world and do the right stuff you know 
Yeah, well put, really well put. And in a way, that's, that's sort of what we're hearing in the news today often is that people are striving for that love of the neighbor incarnate, that, you know, God with us, within and without. And yet we don't always know the best ways. And, and you're right, we struggle. Like we like to be treated well, but we don't always really look <laughs> at, you know, at a critical, uh, in a critical way at how we're treating other people. And That's so good. Uh, Everybody likes to be treated well. <laughs> but, oh, oh, I have to do the same thing. I have to do the same. Yeah, and it's, it's hard work, like you said, and, and these potent tools. That's why they're so important here. Wow, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate you, you exploring that with me. I, before we kind of sign off, I'm curious. I know you all have been um, holed up just like everybody else uh, there at home, and I know you're filming at home. And What's it like having the family around and, and all that uh, yeah. during these times? Well, it's got it's it's fun and challenging, but neither one too bad. I mean, I'm just very lucky that I can work from home, you know, um, and that we're able to keep doing what we're doing. Um, our house is small, you know. We've got a four-year-old, so it's like even right now, just like Congrats. do this for an hour because oh, we don't want. I, I'm doing so much filming and stuff that we can't just have it be like okay, don't make any noise. Wow, this is happening, you know. So it's just like. I think that it's it's cool because I get to you know, be be around my family more and uh, and you know kind of have them see a little bit of of what I'm doing. Uh, you know, there's we want to make sure that we're able to still serve the audience as best we can. So far, it seems like it's been we've been lucky to do that. It's a little less efficient, you know. Like for example, if I'm going to film, we have a show called News from Heaven where I draw and on Swedenborg's writings and stuff. You know, I have to set that up in my living room every time and take it down. So you lose like an hour on either side because it's, it's kind of a complicated setup to, to get the technology right, um, so, which, you know, it's easy, it was easier when we were popping into the studio. But overall, the team has been awesome at, at doing stuff from home. Um, and I, I think that we're still able to, to do, the, do the, the, the primary service, which is like get this stuff out. And we, yeah, we just... Uh, the county where I'm in is now in what's called yellow phase. So we're allowed to do some businessy stuff. So we, we, we're probably going to be just going into the studio for some essential filming. We won't really be working out of there. Um, so we, we may be doing it. We'll see how, how things kind of fluctuate, but we'll find a way. We'll find a way to make sure that, that service is not interrupted because if people are, we have people writing in and saying like, I, yeah, especially during the stress of all this, people are tuning in. And, um, and and want that to be there, uh, we want it to be there. We want to always, you know, have like, look, we're, we're here, we're saying what we say, um, and you can count on us. So we're working hard to, to make that happen. Well, it's, it's amazing uh, what you do, and thank you for continuing to work hard and, and being as uh, genuine and um, dedicated as you, as you are with it. Uh, folks, again, uh, find the channel if you haven't already off the left eye. Uh, Curtis, I feel like, um, you know, I gotta, we gotta have you on more because I think people love to hear from you, but I know you're busy. Uh, so thank you for taking this time and, and uh, hitting on so many things I think are really uh, topical and, and, and speak to people's hearts. So thanks again, Curtis. Thank you, Corey. This was a lot of fun. Oh, excellent. Well, folks, uh, thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe and go forth uh, knowing that you're loved. Bye.